All right, let's get started. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Survive to Thrive. We're going to pick up where we left off on Tuesday. We're talking pricing, and I am going to go right to the whiteboard. Let me just get set up here. Okay. A uh, quick review. Uh, when you are doing, when you are preparing for your listing appointment, uh, you're going to pull the comps. You're going to look at all the properties that sold, all the properties that are active <clears throat> in the same neighborhood as your subject property. And then you're going to do a supply and demand analysis for that price range within a one to two mile radius of your subject property. And quickly, the way we do that is it's a math equation. So A is active listings within that one to two mile radius. And again, we're looking in a price range, for example, of 350 to $400,000. B is sold. All the properties that sold in the same location, one to two mile radius of your subject property, and also within that same price range. And we're gonna go back six months. Now, again, the reason we do this is it's just a math equation and we need the data. C is we're going to take B and we're going to divide it by six, which is going to tell us how many homes are selling every 30 days, for example, four. And then D is we're going to take A, how many active listings there are, let's say there's 16. So we're going to take A or 16 divided by C or four, which would tell us that we have a four month supply of inventory. All right, super important that you know that. Now, picking up from there, you need to master three things in becoming an expert at working with a seller listings. You need to master observation. In other words, this is what I see. You need to master um Forecast. In other words, based on what I see, here's where we're going. And then three is you need to master the art of persuasion. Now, it's super important because if you don't, you're going to end up settling on a price or working on a strategy in order to make your seller happy. And making your seller happy isn't the goal. The goal is to get their home sold so that they can move to Atlanta in order to be close to their family, or they can move to Chicago in order for that job transfer. And we understand that it's critically important to get this right, because if we don't get this right, even if we miss it by a little bit, then it's possible that that home is going to sit on the market and that seller is going to end up chasing the market down. Now, when you have zero to 30 days of inventory, that's a red hot seller's market. And you can price the property above the market value. It's still going to sell. You know, the, the strategy that I always followed was two to three percent above the market value if I had less than 30 days of inventory. So if all the data is telling me this home is going to sell for $500,000, I could price that property at $515,000 and it's still going to sell. It's going to sell because when you have zero to 30 days, this is supposed to be a house, terrible drawing. Horrible drawing. Let's try that again. Who wants to live in an arrow? <laughs> Let's make it. All right, there's a house. Little windows. We got a door. All right, now it looks like a Halloween creature. <laughs> All right, zero to 30 days. For every house on the market, you've got three buyers that are going to buy a home that month. Now, when you have three buyers that are going to buy a home that month and there's one home for sale, the buyers are going to bid the price up in order to win the contract. They're competing with other buyers in order to get that home sold. Now, when we move to 60 to 90 days of inventory, 
this doesn't exist anymore. What we're looking at now in that market, for every home that's on the market, there's one buyer that's going to buy that month. Now, let me slow down for a moment because that doesn't mean that you can price at market value and it's going to sell because there's one, one home for sale for every buyer that's going to buy because there's new homes coming on the market every day. You guys hear me? And we're beginning to see the market move from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Now, what happens when you get above 90 days, let's just say you're looking at 120 to 180 days on the market. In other words, you're looking at four to six months. Now, you've got... Three homes for sale for every one buyer. Instead of buyers competing for listings, now you have listings competing for buyers. And when that happens, the only way the seller wins that competition is on price. So you start to see sellers start to drop their price. So I'm gonna give you a price formula that you can use um, as a model just to make this simple. All right, here we go. Zero to 30 days. You could price the property up to 133% of market value. When you get to 60 to 90 days, you're at market value. And I'm saying that with a little bit of caution because it's possible that you still might have to look at a lower price in order to win the competition because it's important that we understand when there's 60 to 90 days of inventory, what we're saying is there's nine homes for sale, three are selling every 30 days. That's a, nine, that's a 90 day supply of inventory. And if there's nine homes for sale and three are selling every 30 days, those nine sellers are competing for those three buyers. And how do you compete? Location, amenities, condition, and price. And the easiest thing to fix is price. So the easiest thing for us to do in order to beat the competition is to look at where do we need to price this property? Pricing strategy versus market value. Now, when you get to 120 days on the market, I'm looking at 98% of market value in order to win that competition. So I've got 120 days of inventory. That means there's 12 homes for sale and three are selling every 30 days. We're getting into a buyer's market now. So that $500,000 home, if I price it at 490 and the market value is 500, I'm going to attract the buyers that are out there because it's a good deal. I'm beating the competition. Now, remember I talked about the art of persuasion. So when you're talking to a seller and you're, and you're sharing with them, here's the strategy, guys. Here's what we need to do in order to get your home sold so that you can move to Atlanta in, in 90 days in order to start that new competition. In order to beat the competition, we need to beat them on location, condition, amenities, and price. And the easiest area for us to compete is price. Now, I know it's going to feel like you're giving your home away. But what I want you to understand is 90 days from now, you're going to be in Atlanta in time to start your new job versus if we price it at 510, you could still be in your home 90 days from now. And you're not in Atlanta in time to start your new job. Or you're moving to Atlanta and leaving family behind to live in the house trying to sell it while you're in Atlanta and your family's not together. Now, if your holding cost is $4,000 a month and you're in the home an additional three months, you spent $12,000 in additional holding costs. So the difference between 510 and 490 is $20,000, but you lost $12,000 in holding costs. So now there's only an $8,000 difference. Now, what if the market starts to shift and the values start to drop and you're still in your home 
five months from now, it hasn't sold yet. And instead of 490, now we're looking at 480. Would you regret that? If you had a crystal ball and you knew that your home was going to sell for 490, would you rather sell for 490 in 30 days or would you rather do it in six months? All right. Now, as we get out here, where now you're in six months of inventory, 180 day plus on the market, we're gonna to have to be even more competitive on price. It's gonna be somewhere between 96 and 97% of market value in order to get that home sold. Again, persuasion, and this is where perspective comes in. Perspective is the only thing that can change the, the outcome of the event without changing any of the facts. If I'm selling my home and I'm looking at selling it at 95% at market value, for example, I've got that $500,000 home and I'm going to sell it for $475,000. Holy cow, I'm giving my home away. All right, hold on just a moment. If six months from now you're in Atlanta versus still being in that home and you don't have the additional six months of holding cost at $4,000 a month or $3,000 a month, that's $18,000. So now we've just closed that $25,000 gap by 18 and the market starts to shift and the value starts to drop and it's no longer 475, it's now maybe 470, maybe 465. In other words, your home is worth less and you have the additional cold holding costs. How would you feel about that? Let me ask you another question. What's more important? Being in Atlanta six months from now with your family, enjoying that time with them, or the difference between what you want and what the market says your home will sell for? Now, it's really important that you hear this when a, when a seller starts saying, this is the price I need in order to sell my home. Okay, tell me why that's important. What's important to you about that price? I want you to hear what they said. They said, this is the number, this is the amount I need in order to sell my home. They didn't say, this is what my home's worth. Now they'll try to justify it with all kinds of crazy stuff. Remember, they go to script school too. But would you ever pay more for something because the seller needed it? Whatever you're buying, if you're buying stocks and you're buying shares in Apple and whatever it sells for, let's just say $400 a share for the purpose of this conversation. And I'm selling my shares in Apple. It's $400 a share that we both know that's what it's worth, but I want $425 because I need the money. Are you going to give me $425 because I need the money? No, you're not. Market value is market value. Market value doesn't stand still either. It's either going up or it's going down. It rarely stays here. When you're in a shift, the market will balance out. It'll steady out. And you, and you kind of start to see things not really moving. 1%, 2% either way. But within a very short period of time, it's either going to go back up or it's going to start coming down. It rarely stays even. All right, now I'm gonna to talk to you about pricing ahead of the market versus chasing the market. And I want you to look at this two ways. First of all, if we looked at the market like, if we looked at the market like this, when you're in a seller's market, prices are going up, up, and up. When you're in this market, you're gonna price your home based on the solds. You're gonna look at the homes that sold and you're gonna price the home based on the properties that sold. Also, when the market is super hot, less than 60 days on market, the last home that sold, hey, I'm getting better at drawing houses. The last home that sold creates a new floor, meaning the next one is gonna sell for more money. Makes sense, right? And when you get over here into a market where now you're looking at 90, 90 plus days of inventory, the market's starting to do this. And eventually it's going to do this. When you get in this market, I want you to price the home based on the actives. In other words, yes, look at the solds. 
But also look at the homes that you're going to be competing against in order to beat the competition. Because when you're in this market, the last home that sold creates a new ceiling, meaning the next home is going to sell for less money. And if you price it based on the sold, you're going to be overpriced. If you price it based on the actives, then you're going to be at the right price to get that home sold. Now, here's what typically happens when a seller puts their home on the market at the wrong price. And remember, sellers go to script school too. So two of the scripts they're gonna share with you are, we can always lower the price later or a buyer could always make an offer. All right, so the seller says, I need buy 10. And if you haven't mastered these conversations, you're gonna agree and you're just gonna take the listing at 510. But in my experience, what happens is you got 30 day, zero days on the market, 30 days on the market, 60, 90, we'll go 180 all the way out here, and we'll make this 120. Now, the buyers that are looking at this home, it's going to peak somewhere about 30 days on the market, and then it's going to start to fall, and 180 days on the market, your next door neighbor doesn't even know your home is for sale anymore. Remember, the price you recommended was $475,000 because you're looking at 90 plus days of inventory. I'm using this number for a reason because if, if most of you will do a search in your local MLS, you'll find that that's about where you are. Now it could be less, it could be more depending on location and price, but on average, that's where you are. Now, what happens in this market, somewhere about 60, 70, 90 days on the market, the seller will come to you and they'll go, okay, let's lower the price. So now they wanna bring the price down to 475,000, which is the price that you recommended back here. And a buyer comes in about 120 days on the market and they love the home. They ask their real estate agent, how many days has it been on the market? Real estate agent says 120 days. Buyer says, what's wrong with it? Real estate agent says, nothing's wrong with it. Buyer wants to make an offer. Now, 120 days on the market. If you're the buyer, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I can get a deal. See, here's the thing. 30 days on the market, the seller has the advantage. 120 days on the market, the buyer has an advantage. 30 days on the market, the seller has um, a stronger negotiating position. 120 days on the market, buyer does. So now the buyer comes in with an offer and they offer 460. And because you're more motivated to get your home sold now, and it's the first offer you got, you end up taking the offer. You're not happy, you're mad, but you sold your house. And you sold your home for $15,000 less than you could have if you would have priced it right in the beginning. And you have an additional 90 days of holding cost times $3,000, you've lost, Another 27, three times, sorry. <laughs> You've lost another $9,000. So you have a total loss of $24,000. That's the money you lost because you were trying to make an extra $35,000. Now, when you draw this out for the seller at the listing table, just like I did, get out your legal pad and have the same conversation with them that I just did. That's the art of persuasion. The three things that you need to master as a listing agent are observation. This is what I see. Forecast. Based on what I see, this is where we're going. Persuasion. You have to master the art of persuasion in order to be able to help your yeah. sellers make the right decision. If you let the sellers make a decision based on what they need 
or what they want, the home is going to set. All right, talk to me, guys. The sad truth is um, when you really have lived this and you just, like, I'm just shaking my head <laughs> on um, actually a listing that I had last last year. Um, it was exactly verbatim of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I did not, um, I did not use the art of persuasion in, the, in its best way. I did not. Mm -hmm. However, however, I'm having a comeback. Yeah. I love because, it. Because uh, they reached out to me and we're going to have a really good conversation. Yeah. We're going to have a really good conversation. And John, the one thing that really stuck with me this morning is that when you said, when a seller says, you know, about I need this price to have a conversation. So what's important about that mm -hmm. price to you? opposed to like the value it's a total different conversation yeah nathan it is and because we're the smartest person sitting at the table when it comes to real estate we're the local economists of choice we are strategic pricing professional we understand when, when they say i need the money because this is going to allow me to, to, to get into the home that I want to buy. Okay, I get it. So let's just say there's a $20,000 gap between what you need and what you're going to get. How long do you have to live in that home? How long do you have to stay in your home before you've lost more than the $20,000 you don't want to lose? Then you go, so this is logic. This is all logic. Then you go to tell me why you're why you're selling. I want to move to Tampa to be closer to my family. I've got grandkids there. It's really important that we're close. Got it. So now we talk about emotion and action now. Now we're going to emotion. That's it, Nathan. So there's a ten to twenty thousand dollar difference here, Nathan. Help me understand: Is ten to twenty thousand dollars more important, or being with your family more important? What John, if I'm the family? What would they say? <laughs> right. John, let me ask you this too. Another question in your formula. I think it was uh, when it, when the inventory is zero to 30 days, that's 100 to 103%. You could. Yeah. Uh, it, is that conservative or do you think it could, that 103 can, um, is that a conservative number? 103? Could you be, do, could you price higher? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the answer is it depends, right? Uh, if we're talking about a three hundred thousand dollar home, a three percent difference, it's three oh nine, right? Right. Okay. Right. Now it's gonna really depend. If we're talking about an eight hundred thousand dollar home, now we're talking twenty four thousand dollars over the market value, and it just depends on what the market's doing. Now, if prices are appreciating, if the, if the market is red hot and prices are going up an average of 1% a month, guys, I just picked that as a as an example, okay? Don't use it as a law. And I'm priced 5% above the market, the price is gonna eventually catch up to me. Mm -hmm. It seems like the active, looking at the actives also determine you want to really price at home, right? Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to actives, you got to be really, really careful because you're going to have sellers say things like to you, say things like, well, the people down the street, they're asking 500,000 and my home is a lot better than theirs. So I should sell for 525. Well, what if that $500,000 home is going to sell for 475? Okay. And because you based your price on the active and you went above their price because the market's hot and you started out at 525, now you're $50,000 apart. Are you $50,000 better than that home? You don't, yeah, I guess it, my you don't know what it's sold for yet. We can't, in a hot market, it's yeah. don't want to price it based on actives. Want to price it based on solds.
What about in a hot market? Go ahead. Uh, John, I'm sorry, John. What about in a hot market when uh, you're seeing other actors stay on the market like three, four days and it went, um, well, you just don't know what it sold for. So scratch that. Yeah, I know the actors can be deceiving or can be just a big facade. Okay. Yeah, hey, no, I... no, scratch that thought. <laughs> Lisa, talk to me. Yes. Okay, so I'm working with one of our colleagues, uh, my colleague, um, who has a house that's on the market. Um, they bought it during the height of the market, but now that the market is sold down and he's so overpriced, that um he's getting showings but he's not getting offers so when talking with the listing agent um i'm hoping to see her um at the next meeting that we're going to i'm 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 hoping that she and i want to talk to her about positioning the strategy where and i hate to say this say it this way but you may because of the time Lap, so the market changing, you may have to settle. I hope I'm saying this right. Uh, settle or accept the lower offer and cut the losses. Can we? I mean, how does that? How do you? Um, how do you present that? <laughs> because if you continue to go, yes, you have holding costs. You're losing. You have a really good buyer that's based on who's willing to go above the market price but not your price. And this buyer is savvy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't want to over talk you. So. Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure because I'm moving around trying to get to this 10 o'clock meeting. You're good. Uh, yeah. You're good. So go ahead. How do you have that conversation? So how, how do I have the conversation with the agent and, and with my buyer? I'm not... It's, I could probably find him another house. He does like this house in a location, but what the, like, how do you have a, like both the conversations, I guess the conversation with the buyer and a conversation with the, the, the listing agent. So you've got the buyer. I had the buyer through the open house. Got it. Okay. Yes. Here we go. And guys, we're going to jump after this. Uh, Crystal, if I can get you to stay, I have a meeting with you at nine 30. <laughs> so She's still here. There you are. Okay. Got it. All right, Lisa, here we go. <clears throat> we're looking for at least one to two showings a week on average. If we're not getting at least one to two showings a week, then the property is overpriced. After we've had 10 showings, we should have an offer. If, if we've had 10 showings and haven't had an offer, then the home was overpriced. It's possible the reason you're getting showings is because real estate agents are showing your home just to make the next home they're showing look better. That's an interesting. Okay. Right. Okay. Hmm. If you had a buyer and you had a buyer that was going to buy somewhere between 800 and 850, and let's just say there's six homes for sale. All right. And you know all six homes, and you know one of them's way overpriced, and you've already identified one or as as this is going to be the right buyer, the right home for my buyer, and it's twenty thousand dollars less, or it's thirty thousand dollars less than this other home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the more expensive home, and then I'm going to say, okay, we're going to go look at the next property, and um, I'm going to show you um, what's available at thirty thousand dollars less. Now, what that seller is doing is he's selling the competition. The competition either sells your home or you sell the competition's home. Makes sense. All right. Guys, we've got to jump. Everybody make it a yeah. great day. Thank you for being oh, thank here. Thank you. Oh, you got thank, it. Thank you, John.